Onto have just added the Volkswagen ID4 to their fleet. But is it just a marketing stunt? If you're a regular viewer, you'll know that I'm currently driving a 2021 Audi e-tron from Onto, a monthly car subscription service where your only commitment is to a 30 day rental. Let's address the elephant in the room before we get started, shall we? It's expensive. The reason it's expensive is because both there's the short term commitment and the fact that it's all inclusive. Just like a daily rental car you might pick up at an airport or something like that, it is fully inclusive. You've got fully comprehensive insurance, maintenance, tyres and even, in this case, public charging with various providers. One hassle-free monthly payment and whether you think it represents value for money or not, it's certainly easy. And it's a great way to try out a range of new EVs before you buy one. This video isn't sponsored by Onto, but there is a referral code in the description. If you used it to sign up, we'd both get £50 credit. I would recommend it to anybody that was either trying to work out whether an EV would work for them, or even maybe waiting for a long lead time factory order to be delivered. No credit check, no hassle, just sign up and pick a car. <clears throat> Some have longer lead times than others, they don't have the biggest fleet in the world, which is how I ended up with the e-tron, because it was available for really fast delivery, but the selection changes all the time. Once you've signed up for an account, you can very easily have a, a view of what's available and when in your area. So I think that's the best way to see what, what's possible for you to have, just to sign up. They do like a, a driving license check and stuff, but you don't need to pay a deposit. You don't have any money down or anything like that. You sign up, give them your details, and you can then see what's available and when it could be available for delivery. Right then, the Volkswagen ID4. Volkswagen's new family size SUV, built on the same platform as the Skoda Enyaq and the Audi Q4 e-tron, the smaller brother to the full fat e-tron that I'm driving at the moment. It comes in a variety of battery sizes and specifications, a little bit like the ID3. You really can have one for every situation depending on how much you're willing to spend. On to have just added them to their fleet and they're available to order now for delivery in mid-November. And in this case is the 77 kilowatt hour usable Life Pro Performance model. Perhaps not the highest spec in terms of equipment, but it's certainly got the range of 320 mile WLTP. I had a look to see what was available and in my area I can have them either white or silver for delivery mid-November onwards. I was kind of hoping for that piss yellow colour. I saw one charging at Ionity Charger the other day, but you can't have it all, can you? The price is what I'm not so sure about though. It is priced at a whopping £899 per month. Now, as I said before, Onto is not a cheap option, and you're paying an awful lot for convenience. But I think there's something else at play here with the ID4. You see, they also offer the Audi Q4 e-tron for £999 per month. For that, you get the S-Line 40 with the comfort and sound pack. It's a fair bit more in terms of equipment and list price. Let's have a look at the configurator, shall we? So the ID4 in the spec they're offering, Life Pro Performance, would cost you £43,684. And the Q4 would be £48,960. A £6,300 difference between them. Maybe not a huge amount, but probably not actually as much a difference as I thought it was going to be. But the equipment, and for some, the prestige badge, I guess would sway a lot of people towards the Audi. It might, of course, have the opposite effect, depending on your point of view. But it feels to me, like a little bit of a marketing exercise. It feels a little bit like the cinema popcorn pricing conundrum. So if you offer a small and a large option, so be that popcorn for £3 and £6, or the ID3 for £589 and the Q4 for £999, most people will choose the cheaper option, feeling like they're not seeing particularly good value for money. You're paying an awful lot more for the bigger size of the next option. If, however, you introduce a medium so back to the popcorn option, maybe if we had a medium at £4.50 or an ID4 at £899, more and more people will choose the upgrade option, the large, so the £6 popcorn or the £999 Audi, because it's not much more for that perceived upgrade over the middle option. Could that be what's at play here? Do they actually have a load of Q4s they want to shift? So they've stuck a few ID4s into the mix to try and push people into them. I'm not sure, but let me know what you think in the comments. As an aside, I thought it would be quite interesting to have a look at some sort of standard leasing quotations for these cars, just to see how they stack up. 
Not that a leasing company will particularly be able to get you one of these cars at short notice. The lead times currently for new builds are really quite long. And I think you maybe end up renting a car from one two to tide you over in the meantime if you were going to go for one of these deals. To compare something as close as possible, I've chosen 24 month contracts with a one month deposit up front. Now I know you can lower the monthlies by pushing the term out to three or four years or by paying huge amounts up front. So I get a nine month or 12 month initial deposit. But that seems like a really wild comparison to a 30 day rolling contract. See, pushing the term out is okay if you're less inclined to change your car often. But when you start putting down 9 or 12 months payments on a lease just to lower the monthlies, I'm not so sure it's a, a great example of a deal. I, I understand why you maybe put a big deposit in on something like a PCP or a higher purchase, but on a lease, I've never really understood it. Because when the next one rolls around, you're going to have to find that 9 or 12 months again. So if I was ever going to lease a car for sort of two years, three years, I would definitely prefer deals with smaller upfront payments. So looking at the ID4 then, in the Life Pro Performance spec that the onto cars are, I'm plugging those details into leasing.com, which is like an aggregator for lease deals. I was actually quite surprised. The cheapest currently available on that OnePlus 23 is 751 pounds per month. And of course that is high because of the short term and the low initial payment. But I think if you're looking for something with as short a commitment as possible, then I think it's a reasonably fair comparison. It almost makes the extra £149 a month to not only shorten that to a 30-day commitment, but also include your insurance, maintenance and charging seem like a good deal. I think if you were determined enough, you could spend that £150 a month just charging it at Ionity, which is of course included using the Shell fuel card. The Q4 e-tron is even more of a surprise. I guess they don't really stack up well for these short-term lease deals. And they might be a bit more affordable with a three or four year term, but 24 months or one plus 23 is £964.60 per month. That's a hefty amount and really not far away at all from what Onto are offering. In fact, I think it would be a no brainer. It, you know, if you had to choose between those two deals, well, the extra like 40 quid a month, it would be an absolute no brainer just to go for the sort of no commitment, hand it back anytime you like, and it's all inclusive. Now, I know there are cheaper deals out there if you're willing to lengthen that time or um, increase the deposit. But it's actually quite eye-opening how much the sort of two-year lease deals seem to cost, especially on cars like this. So there we go then. Which car would you choose? The ID4 or the Q4 if you had to choose? Of course, half of you are probably going to tell me that you'd actually have the new MG ZS EV instead. And the other half of you will just say that everybody should just buy a Tesla. That seems to kind of sum up my comments whenever we talk about any other car models. But... Let me know in the comments what you think. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.